All right. How's everybody doing this morning? Hanging in there? All right. Cool. So last time we did a bunch of paperwork so that we were all uh, ready to go. And so this time we actually get to start doing some fun stuff. So um, like I said, this class is all about robotics, but we're going to be covering a number of different topics related to robotics. So today we're going to start with 3D uh, computer aided design because um, a lot of times robots have parts that are um, designed with 3D CAD. Um, either either they're actual structural parts or um, add-on grippers and things like that that might be designed with 3D CAD. Um, so we're going to be working on that. And also it can be useful for uh, the robots that you'll actually be building in this class here. Um, so we're going to start with that today and we're going to um, do a, an introduction today and then we're going to do a um, a little bit more next time we'll be um, exploring um, models that have several 3D parts put together in them and then the class after that we'll actually be doing some 3D printing so we have a 3D printer in the back of the room there um, and we'll, we'll learn how that works and then after that we'll move on to uh, other topics including um, programming and other things related to robots so that's what we will be doing for the next couple of classes today in particular um, like I said, we're going to be working on 3D CAD. So our goal for today will be to uh, create a part in our 3D uh, CAD program and then turn it into a drawing that looks like this. Okay? So um, this includes several different views of the part uh, as well as all the dimensions for that part. So um, it, it might look like kind of a lot, but we'll go through the steps to uh, actually making that and hopefully it won't be uh, too much of a challenge. So that's the goal for today is to create a drawing like that. Um, we'll talk about some of the file types that are involved and the basic procedure for creating a 3D, um, a 3D model and a drawing like that. And then I will do a demonstration of how to actually do it. Um, and then We'll have a short break and then we'll go on to the lab and that'll be the hands-on part where you all get to do it yourselves. So like I said, the goal for today will be to design one of those parts. So during the lab, you'll get a chance to work on the computers here and um, design that part and then turn it into a drawing like I showed. So that's what we'll be working on today. Any questions before we get going? All right, cool. So then let's get started. Okay, so this is the part that you are going to be making. Uh, I'm going to make a slightly different part for my demonstration. Uh, I'm going to make this part, but the, the operations are going to be very similar. So, um, yeah, so you should be able to uh, pick up everything you need as I go through the demo. So the program that we're going to use for this 3D CAD is called Inventor. So um, to get that, you can type start and then inventor, and it's this inventor um, 2023, okay? So, um, so when inventor comes up, um, it should look like this. This is like a blank screen. Um, and so in order to get started, we have to create something. So we're gonna go up here to file and then um, we're going to click on new and this lists the different uh, file types that you can create in inventor so let me talk about these for for just a second so um, at the top there are these 
part files. These are kind of the, the building blocks that we use. So a part is like one thing. So the, the, the model that we create is a part. Um, you can put several parts together into a, um, an assembly, and that's what we have down here. So after you've created several parts um, that might go together, like a couple of gears that mesh or a wheel and an axle, you can put those together into an assembly, and that would be this file down there. And then once you have a part or an assembly and you want to share it with somebody else, uh, you can turn it into a drawing. So the drawing is one uh, is is how you make a picture that looks like this that has um, the you know a picture of the part, but also all of the dimensions that somebody would need uh, to make this part. Okay, um, and it has a little title block down here to show who made the part, and it can show when it was made and revisions and things like that. So that's what a drawing is, and then. Finally, a presentation um, is kind of a, a neat computer-aided way to show how parts go together. So this is how you can, with a presentation, you can actually create something called an exploded view. That's where you take your, your assembled parts and you show them kind of moving apart from each other. Um, and coming back together. So you can show how they, they actually fit together with each other. So that would be a presentation. Excuse me. Hey, come on in. So, um, so those are the, the main file types that are available in Inventor. Parts are little things. Assemblies are several parts stuck together. Drawings are pictures of the parts with the dimensions and then presentations are animated um, movies of parts that, that show how things fit together or how things move. So if you have like a steering wheel that turns a shaft that, that causes a rack and pinion to move back and forth, you could show that with a presentation as well. So those are the basic file types that we can create in Inventor. The starting point is almost always the part. So that's, that's where we're going to start. We're going to create a part that, that matches up with um, the drawing that we have. So there are two types. There's a standard part and a sheet metal part. Morning. So it's just what it sounds like. A sheet metal part is something that would be made out of thin sheets of metal. Um, we're not going to do that. We're just going to use a standard part. So we're going to uh, make that. Um, so let's take a look at the, um, the drawing that we're going to use. So, so this drawing shows us what we're going to build. So we want to build our part to look like this over here on the right. And all of the dimensions here show us um, the different uh, dimensions that we will need. Okay, so um, so we'll use this drawing to help us create our part. Okay, so when I go to create a part, the first thing I see is this big blue screen. It's like a blank canvas. It's a little bit intimidating at first sometimes, but it's it's um, where we start. So the basic procedure that we use when we're creating a 3D part is we start by sketching it in two dimensions, um, so like a, a drawing on a piece of paper, and then we, we pull that part into the third dimension. So it's, that's called extruding it. So we make it grow, essentially. Um, and then after we do that, we can modify it. So we can um, do more sketches and make more things grow, or sketch somewhere else and, and use that to cut through our, our model, or um, round off corners, or, or shave things down, add holes, and things like that. So that's the basic procedure. We start with the sketch, and then we go from there. So the way that we create a new sketch is we come up here to the top left corner where it says Start 2D Sketch. So we click on that. And then this shows us um, three different planes that we can use. 
to sketch on. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. I'm going to pick this one here. So now we can actually start our sketching. Um, so so um, we could take a look back here at our model. So the basic um, outline of this model that I'm going to create is, is kind of like a, a T shape here. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to draw kind of um, something that looks a bit like a T. And the, um, the exact dimensions don't really matter at this point. So I'm going to just kind of roughly draw in something that looks like a T. Hi. Um, so, yeah. Um, so when I'm drawing, you'll notice that I can move this, this line around to any different angle that I want. But when it's straight up and down, uh, there is this, this little sort of um, T-shaped indicator. That, that um, shows that the line is at 90 degrees to uh, the other line. Okay? So um, if I want the lines to be perpendicular, I, I want to move my um, line around until I see that little T-shaped indicator. Okay? And also, you see, I can move this, this line up and down anywhere I want, but if when it's right um, at the same height as this other line, this, this sort of um, temporary blue line across appears. So that shows me that I'm at that same height. Okay? So I'm going to uh, click there come across um, and click there and then I'm going to click back um, where I started. And then if I click back on that spot where I started, you'll notice that I stopped making new lines. Okay, um, So now um, I, I have a complete um, enclosed form here and I'm not making any more lines. Okay, So this is sort of kind of the general shape of the, um, the thing. But you notice there's a, there's a bunch of other um, dimensions. And I, I didn't really uh, put in the dimensions yet. So what I can do now is I can start adding these dimensions. So I know that the, the top line is 7 inches wide. And um, the left line here going down is 1 and a half inches long. So what I can do is I can come up here and I can add dimensions. I click on this uh, button that says dimension at the top, and then I click on this top line, and I can, I can drag that out. So right now that says 18.8. Uh, so I only want that to be 7. So I click OK there. So that's 7 inches. Now that threw everything off. <laughs> um, so now if I go back here, I know that this line on the right is supposed to be 2 inches long. So um, so I'm still on dimension. I can click on this line and just drag it down and then type in 2. Okay. Um, so I'm getting closer. And I said that we wanted this line here to be 1.5 inches long. So I can type in 1.5 there. Um, all right. So we're getting closer now. And um, we said that it's going to be two inches uh, to the sort of the, the top part of this um, this T, not including that that half circle. So um, I can make this line two inches also. Okay, and then the the half or the, this part of the T is going to be two inches wide. So I'll, I'll put that in also. So um, there are different ways to put in the dimension. So I could, I could click on this line here, or I could click on that line, and then this other line over here. And, and then I'm showing the, the distance between those two lines. OK? So that's also two inches. All right. So, so that's looking closer to my, um, to my 
shape now, and, and I'm getting some accurate dimensions in there. Maybe I don't want to have these dimension lines crossing over each other. Maybe that, that looks a little bit um, confusing to me. If I want to change that and change their position, I just hit the escape key a few times, and then I can drag this uh, dimension around and put it in a more convenient place that, that's a little bit easier to see. Okay? So I can put that over there. Now, this um, picture here had a half circle at the end of this T here. So maybe I want to add that half circle on. So what I can do for that is I can create an arc. So um, I can come up here and create an arc or a, a circle. Now, you notice if I hover my mouse over this arc, there's this help dialog that pops up. So this, this help dialog tells me a little bit about how to use this tool. So if I don't quite remember exactly what I'm doing, I can always hover my mouse over something, and it pops up this, this little help dialog. And it gives me like one or two sentences about how the tool works. So if I know I've used the tool before and I just want to jog my memory, I can, I can look at that. But maybe I've never used that tool before, but it sounds kind of interesting and I want to learn more about it. At the bottom it says you can press F1 for more help. So if we want to learn more about that tool, we can press F1, and then that brings us to um, a help page in our Internet Explorer. And um, this, this tells us all about how to create lines, arcs, and bends. So if you want to learn more about a particular tool, this is a really fast and, and simple way to get more information. Okay? So very useful there. Anyway, I want to create an arc at the, the end here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on uh, one corner, I'm going to click on the other corner, and then I'm going to um, move it out. And, and when I get to one inch, um, this, this um, kind of snaps in place. So you can move your mouse around to that, that particular spot. Or when I'm, when I'm moving this in and out, you can see that, that that blue number there, that number is highlighted in blue. Okay, So the radius is highlighted in blue. What that means is that if I type in a number, it will actually fill in that spot um, and set the radius for me at this point as well. So I can type in a radius of one inch and then hit enter and it will create that, um, that radius just the way that I want, okay? All right, so now I've got a, a sort of a circle there, a half circle, um, but I've still got this, this other um, line going across, and I don't really want that other line. What I want is that when I'm done with this 2D sketch, I want it to be an outline with no other lines in the middle, okay? Because when I go to extrude, the, the extrusion wants just a pure outline. If it has other things in the middle, it, it gets confused. So we want to end up with a pure outline. So we don't want this other line going across the middle there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that line and just hit the delete key, and uh, that gets rid of that line, okay? All right. So I'm getting closer now. Um, but now I have uh, this, this other um, sort of angled line here going across. So I need to put in this other angled line. So I know that it starts two inches from the left, and then it goes out at 45 degrees. Okay? So what I'm going to do, since I know it starts two inches from the left, um, I'm going to create a little point on this line that shows me where to start. So, um, so I can come up here to create and I can click on point. So if I click there, I can put the point somewhere on this line. And then I can go back and add a dimension. So I know that this point is supposed to be two inches from the left, so I can click on the point. And then I can click on the left side, and then um, 
Oh, doesn't like that. So, all right. So for some reason it didn't like that. So let me try this one more time. So we'll get rid of this point. So um, we'll put in. An, all right. So we'll put in a point somewhere on the line. Um, and we'll dimension from the point to here. All right, so there we go. So, so now we know where we're going to start. And then I'm going to put in a line. And I'm going to click on this point so that it, the line starts at that point. And now, um, now you can see I've got two different things going here. I've got the length of the line and also um, the angle of this line. So, um, so my drawing that I'm looking at told me that, that that line is supposed to be going down 45 degrees. So um, what I can do is I can set that angle. So if I hit the tab key, now you can see that that angle is highlighted. I can tab back and forth between the, the length and the angle. So if I highlight the angle and I type in 135, that's, that's going to be 135 degrees from, from vertical. So that would be 45 degrees down. Um, so um, I can tab back and forth. And now you can see that that 135 is set. So I can change the length of the line. Um, but I'm not able to, to move the line around anymore. You can see there's this little lock symbol next to the 135 because I've, I've locked that in. So, and that's what I want. I want that angle to be set. So now I'm just going to move my line out to the point where it touches this other line and click there. And then uh, hit Enter. And now I've got this, this new line in place. Okay. So, so that's good, but now I've got um, now I've got what's that? Okay, now I've got another problem. Um, this this line is going down, but it's kind of touching in the middle of this this other line. And remember, I want to add end up with just a, a pure outline of my um, part. I don't want to have anything um, in between. So maybe I could delete this line, um, and that's fine. But if I do that, now it gets rid of the whole thing. All right, that's not what I want. Um, so I'll undo that. Control Z um, will undo. What I really want is I want to just get rid of this part up here that goes from this corner down to my new line. So what I can do, what I can use for that is this tool called Trim. So I click on Trim up here. And then um, if I hover over this um, part of the line, you can see that part of the line becomes dashed. So that's that's telling me that if I click here, it's just going to trim that dashed part. So that's what I want. So I'm going to click there. Uh, and that gets rid of just that part. And I can do that again up here for this line and trim that back to the next corner. So um, all right. So, so that's looking pretty good. So, so now I've got the general outline of my part. Um, so, so I think that's good for now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click up here where it says finish sketch. So now I'm done with this sketch. So we've done the first part. Remember we said that the general procedure for making a part is to create a sketch of it, an outline in 2D and then extrude it. So we've done the first part. We've created the outline. So now we're going to extrude it. So to do that, we come up here to the ribbon on top and we click on extrude. And um, you can see that it's chosen the outline for us, and it's popped it up into three dimensions. Now, we need to know how tall we want our part to be. So let's look back at our drawing. So over here in the drawing, you can see that, that sometimes dimensions are shown in different views. So this, this top view has a lot of the dimensions we've been looking at so far, but it doesn't have the height. It would be 
impossible to show the height on this view because we're looking at it down from the top. So we have to look at one of the other views. So down here, you can see this view shows that the part is 0.75 inches tall. So I'll go over here and um, in my extrude dialog here, this is where I get to choose all of the settings that I want. So I'm going to, this is the distance that it's getting extruded. So if I made that five inches, um, you can see the preview goes up to five inches, gets a lot taller. But in this case, I want it to be 0.75 inches. Um, just like that. So I click OK. All right. And now we've got our part. So this is, this is the, the first part of our, um, we've, we've got the general shape of our part, but we're missing a lot of the details here. So um, you can see that the actual part has a hole in it and it's got this trough that runs along the top and it's got these other two holes in the sides. So we need to start adding in these details, but we're on the, a good start here. We've got the, the general shape and um, outline of the part. Okay. So, um, so I think the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add this hole here. So um, this hole is right in the middle of the uh, of this T-shaped protrusion here, and um, it's got a diameter of one inch. So let's let's work on that. Now, I've got a, a view of my part here, but sometimes I want to look at the part from, from different angles, or I want to look at it closer or farther away. So there are tools that allow us to do that. So the, the way that we look at it closer or farther away is by using the, the mouse wheel. So that zooms in or it zooms out, depending on which way you scroll. Um, if you want to... Um, um, look at it from a different angle, there's this cube up here on the top right hand corner which represents the different views. So you can click on this cube and drag it around and when you drag it around it um, drags the the part around at the same time. Also there are these different um, these different faces of the cube that are labeled top, front, right, and so on. Um, so if I click on one of these faces, it will make that face point towards the camera, and we can look at it directly from that face. So I'm looking at the front now. If I wanted to look at it from the top, I could click this arrow that's now pointing at the top, and it'll point at the top. Or sometimes I want to look at it, you know, kind of from an angle. So, for instance, I could click on this edge of the cube, and I would start looking at it from that edge. Or this corner, I could start looking at it from that corner. Or you know, um, maybe from this face over here, right? And sometimes I end up looking at it from a really weird angle, and I, I just want to go back to kind of a standard view. If I want that, I can click on this little home icon up here. If I click on that, it'll take me to my home view, uh, which is kind of the standard view. So that's a way that we can look at this, this part from all different sides. So now, I want to create that circle um, on top, which is going to become a hole. So in order to do that, I'm going to create another sketch. So I'm going to come up here to start 2D sketch. And I have to tell the program which face I want to sketch on. So this is like doing a drawing on one side of this part that we've already created. So I'm going to click on the top face here. And so now I'm doing a sketch on on this face. So I could draw, you know, a rectangle on here, or I could draw um, lines or, or anything else that I want. And then use that to, to continue uh, working on my sketch. Um, so we want to, um, we want to put a circle on here that's right in the middle of our T. So really, it's going to be right in the middle of this other circle that we created earlier. So I can go here to circle and um, I'd like to make this circle hey, start right in the middle of um, 
this other circle. So it'd be nice if it just kind of popped to a point there. But when I'm moving my mouse around in the middle of this other circle, uh, there's, there's nothing popping up. It's not, the mouse isn't snapping to any, any point um, like I would <clears throat> like it to do. So that's because right now the, the um, program is ignoring sketches that we, we did previously, okay? Um, so um, what I can do if I want that, um, if I want to bring in some of the, the dimensions and things from previous sketches is I can click up here where it says project geometry. And then I can click on this circle um, and that should now um, bring to this new sketch um, dimensions and, and properties from that circle. So now if I go back to my, my circle here and I go towards the middle, you can, I don't know if you can see it on the projector, but there's this very light yellow dot right there in the center. Um, and so now I can click on that and I can start my circle there and, and that's going to be right in the middle of the other circle. So you can see if I were to make a, a two inch diameter circle, it would lie exactly on top of the other one. Okay. So, but the, the drawing told me that this circle should be one inch in diameter. So I can just type in one and now I've created a one inch diameter circle. And that's all I want to do in this sketch. It's a lot simpler than the last one because all I want to do is I want to make a hole here through my new, um, through, through my part. So I've got the shape of my hole now and to create the hole I'm going to do another extrusion. So when I click on extrude you can see that the default is for this, uh, this new circle to create another um, extra amount of part coming up out of the, the original part. But that's not what we want here. Instead, we want to use this extrusion to actually cut. So um, the way that we do that is we come to our pr extrusion properties down here, and we're going to click on um, this cut option. So when I click on cut, um, that now shows that this, this circle is going down and cutting through my part. And if I want to look at it more closely, I can come back up here to my cube and rotate that around. And we can see that it's, it, it's actually going all the way through the part, which is good. Um, but there's, there's something that's still not quite right here, or not ideal, I should say. Right now, the, this behavior is that this is cutting a particular distance. So it's cutting three quarters of an inch. Now my part right now is three quarters of an inch. So when we cut down three quarters of an inch, it goes all the way through, which is great. But there's a problem with that, which is that um, sometimes these parts get modified. Okay. So right now my drawing says that this part, hey Lynn. Good morning. morning. Um, th thank you for coming over. <laughs> um, would you be able to come back around noon or so? Yeah, we'd be fine. Okay, perfect. I loaded it on Friday. I don't know where it is. I, I don't know. It has deep freeze and I didn't, didn't it, look back. It, yeah, it must have gotten... Around noon would work? Perfect, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right, so, so we're cutting three quarters of an inch, which is going through our part right now, but sometimes parts need to be changed. Um, so I could make this part right now the way it is and cut down three quarters of an inch, but then later somebody might come back and make this part an inch thick. Um, and then if they made it an inch thick, now this, this little circle wouldn't go all the way through anymore. Um, so instead of just going down a particular distance, we want to change that. We want to make it go all the way through my part, no matter how thick that part is. So I can change that by clicking on this little button that says through all. So now um, this, this through all uh, will, will cut down through the entire part no matter how thick it is, okay? So um, 
So then I click OK, and now you can see that I've got that hole going all the way through my part. Okay? All right. So now if I come back here, please stop me at any time if you've got questions. I know I'm kind of going through this, but, but let me know if anything comes up, okay? All right, so, um, so I've got this one inch diameter hole going through my part, but you can see that in the model, it's not just a hole, it's also got this kind of uh, angled lip around the hole. So, and this, this angled lip is a quarter of an inch wide. So we'd like to put that in. So let's do that. If we come back here to my model, an angled lip like that, or an angle cut off of um, any edge, is called a chamfer. So we can come up here on the top ribbon again, and there's this button for chamfers. So I can click on that, and then um, I can click on the edge that I want to put this chamfer on. So in this case, it's going to be the edge of this circle. So I can click there. And now that has created this little lip that, that goes around, this, this little angled lip that goes around my circle. Okay? So that's the idea. But now we want to make sure that we set the distance correctly. So in the drawing, uh, the distance was a quarter of an inch, but here it's 0.125 inches. So I can change this around, so I can make that 0.25, and you can see that the preview on my drawing updates as well. Okay, so, so that's great. I can make this um, bigger uh, if I want, if I were making a different drawing, but if I make it too big, I think it's going to have issues. So if I try and make that 0.6, say, oh no, no, it still worked. It's now cutting down into the uh, sort of the front of my part, but uh, it's still working. If I make it one inch, yeah, now, now the simulation doesn't know what to do because it would be going down uh, too far. So if I hit OK, it, it tells me that there's this error. There, it failed because essentially that lip would be going down so far it would be cutting through the bottom of the hole and, and it wouldn't work. So, um, so when you put the chamfer in, you, you need to stay within certain uh, limits. So we'll make that 0.25 the way that it's shown in the drawing and say OK. And now we've got that chamfer on there. So any questions about that? Uh, it, so, so that's a great question. So this one, um, I believe that it's at 45 degrees. So if it goes a uh, quarter inch in, it also goes a quarter inch down. Yeah. Um, but there, there are different uh, ways to specify this. So, so if we choose um, distance, yeah, you just get the one value. Um, yeah, here you could choose distance and angle. So if I wanted it at a different angle, yeah. Or this one, you could you could have two separate distances, one for left and one for vertical. Yeah. So the chamfer only goes like a 45 degree or 30 degree. It's not like it's straight, and it doesn't go straight down. Uh, right. It it doesn't. Degree, I mean. Right. You if you want it something to go straight down, there's, there's different ways to do that, but not with the chamfer. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, so that, that actually um, brings me to the next part of the uh, drawing, which is these holes over here on the, the right-hand side. Okay, so, um, so, We've got these holes over here, um, and it looks like I, I failed to put in the distances for those holes, but um, I remember what they are, so I will do that. So we're going to draw these holes um, on the, the right-hand side of this, this face, and they're going to be uh, halfway up the face, um, and so let's put those in. So. The way that I'm going to do that um, is that 
I'm going to do a, another sketch on this face. But in this case, I'm not going to actually draw all, every detail of that hole. I'm just going to put two points where I want the centers of those holes to be. So I'm going to come up here to point, and I'm going to uh, put one there and, and one there. Again, the, the exact placement um, doesn't matter so much when you're creating them. Um, because you can come back later and add these dimensions. So I'm going to make that point, um, point 0.375, so it's halfway up. And then um, with this one, I could put in another dimension and also make it 0.375, or I could use one of these things up here called a constraint. And a constraint means that um, the one, one piece of um, geometry is kind of tied to another. So, for instance, I could make a horizontal constraint, um, which means that if I click on two things, they both have to be in the same line horizontally. Okay? Yeah? I just remember this is not Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's fine. No worries. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, so, um, so I'm creating this horizontal constraint. Um, and so then, um, now both of these parts are in the same line horizontally. So that means that if I come back here and change this um, dimension for this one and made it, say, point, uh, 0.5, when I move that one, you see the other one moves at the same time because they both have to be on the same horizontal line. Okay, so that can be useful in some cases. All right, and then, so I've set that height dimension, and then I'm going to um, choose this uh, horizontal dimension. That'll be 0.5 there, and then that one will be 1 inch. Or... One point five. All right, something like that. All right, and then I finish my sketch. So now I don't have the holes yet. I just have the um, the little points where the holes are going to be. So now to add these holes, what I can do is I can come up here to this hole tool and click on that, and this automatically picks those two points for me um, that, I've, that I've already created. So now, um, now I can choose um, different, different things about how I want this hole to be. So I could have a hole that just goes all the way through. Um, that would be fine, but my drawing shows a little bit different. So, so these holes have kind of a, a countersink there, and they've got some threads on them, and they go down to a point. And if I look down here, there is this, um, this little note, which is called a callout. And uh, so the callout has information about what we want that hole to be like. So um, this says that this should be a quarter 20, which is um, a particular type of thread. Uh, it's a quarter inch wide, and there's 20 threads per inch. And then it says it should go down um, 0.75 inches, and yeah, a diameter of um, 0.38 inches um, for the uh, the countersink there. Okay, and 82 degrees. So so this callout tells me information about that that particular hole. So this would be you know, a hole that could be threaded so that bolts could be attached to it. So if I want to put that on my drawing, I can use, I can choose other types of holes here. So, um, so uh, I could choose a, a tapped hole, because I know that this is supposed to have quarter 20 thread there. And, and sure enough, when I click on tap, um, it, it pulls up that 
um, that tap designation right there. So quarter 20 is what we want, but there are all these other uh, types of, of taps as well. So um, you, could, you could choose any one of those. And then, yeah, so you can also choose the size, which, which sets the diameter of the, the hole. Um, and then also you can choose the, the seat. So, so in my drawing, I had a, a countersink here, but um, you could also have a, a counter bore, which, which is, I think, what you were talking about. So, so this would be one way to make a, a counter bore. Now, if I just look at this, this hole, right now it's kind of hard to see what's going on because my model is like a solid, a solid um, entity. So, so this is kind of how a real piece of metal would look. But if I want to know what a hole is doing inside of my model, it would be nice if I could kind of see inside there, right? Well, it turns out you can, you can change your model view around so that you can see down inside of your, your model. So the way that you can do that is you can come up here to view and then um, on visual style here, this is, this is what is determining the way that your model looks. So right now I have it shaded with, um, with edges, but if I wanna see down inside my model, I might pick a wireframe with hidden edges. So Wireframe is like a model made out of wires almost. Um, and then with hidden edges, hidden edges are the, the things that you see that, that would be inside of your model, okay? So right now, um, the model looks, um, right now we've got these, these holes with a counter bore because I was showing that as um, an example, but I'm gonna, uh, switch back to counter sync because that's that's what the um, model specified and then um, down here you can see that that the width is 0.375 and an 82 degree um, chamfer like um, was specified in my drawing so that's all good now the drawing though the drawing showed these holes only going down a, a certain depth so this little down arrow says that the depth is going to be 0.75 degree or inches, 0.75 inches down. So I need to change these holes around so that they only go down three quarters of an inch. So um, the way that I do that is I can um, um, come down here and um, so Instead of uh, having the termination be through all, um, I can have the termination be to a particular distance. Okay, so yeah, when I click on that, now you can see that that distance is shown here, both on my model and also on my, um, also on my properties here. So. So we can leave that at 0.75 inches because that's what the drawing specifies. And then there's also um, a space where you can specify the thread depth. So sometimes you don't need the threads going all the way to the bottom. So you can, you can make that whatever you want. Um, in this case, I'll make it 0.75 also. So the threads go all the way down. And then when you're happy with that, um, you can uh, click OK. And now those holes become part of your model. So, so now I can see that I've got those holes in my model there. So any questions about that? All right, and then, um, so the next thing is that the last part of my model is that I've got the, this trough that runs kind of along the top of my model. So uh, I'm gonna put that in. So, uh, the dimensions for this trough are shown over here on the right-hand side. So we can see that it is, hey guys, do you have a question? You doing all right? All right, so I would recommend that, that during the lecture you just kind of watch and follow along and then I would um, 
hold off until actually after the, the lecture is done to start working on the, the model. But yeah. Um, all right, so the, the trough is about half inch from the side and then it's a half inch wide and a quarter inch deep. So let's, let's put that in. Um, so again, I'm gonna come back here to sketch and I'll do a 2D sketch. And um, I'm gonna create a rectangle here. So, um, so I'm gonna click there and up there. And I can put in 0.5 right now, because I know it's gonna be 0.5 inches wide. And then the only other thing that I, I need to do here is create the dimension from the side. Um, I'll make that 0.5 also. And then I will go back and uh, click on finish. And now, now I'm gonna put in my um, trough. So again, I'm gonna go to extrude. So I'm gonna extrude this and I'm gonna cut again. But in this case, I'm gonna cut down only a quarter of an inch. All right, and then uh, finally, that, that trough has little rounded corners on the top edges. And the, the radius for those corners is 0.13 or 0.125 inches. Um, so little rounded corners like that are called fillets. And so there's a fillet diagram or a dialogue up here at the top just like um, there was a dialogue for the chamfer. So again, we, we click on fillet and then we click on those edges and you can set the, the radius for that um, fillet. And <clears throat> yeah, so the drawing said 0.13 or 0.125, so we'll leave it there. And that is, that's pretty much the end of our part, okay? so. Um, so I'll switch back to making my view, um, the shaded view. So it's a little bit easier to see. So you can see that we could also look at it, um, uh, shaded with hidden edges, um, so that you can kind of see inside there and see those, those screw holes going inside the, the part. So that's, that's, that's what our part should look like. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna save this whole thing. Um, and this brings me to something about these computers here in the lab. So if you save anything on the desktop on these computers, that will get completely wiped out at midnight on every night, okay? Because these computers have a program called Deep Freeze that comes in and, and gets rid of everything that um, is on the desktop and just brings it back to like a, a clean state so that other people can use the computers. So that means that if anything you save on the desktop will be gone the next time you, you come in. So it's fine to use the desktop for you know temporary things that you just are, you know, you don't really care about. But if you want to save anything long term, you would want to save it in your um, either on a USB stick drive or on your, um, there's this network drive called your student drive. Uh, so the way that you would get to your student drive is you could go to this PC and then um, down at the bottom, uh, you will have a drive that's labeled with your student ID. And you can click on that and um, then save, save your part there, okay? Um, so, I'll go in there and um, I will save this as um, demo part. Okay, so that's the, the first part of this assignment. We've, we've created this part. But now, the next thing that we wanna do is we want to actually create a drawing of the part that looks like this. So this is something that you could share with um, with a machinist, say, if you wanted the machinist to make this part for you out of aluminum, or um, you could share this with, um, you know, an, an engineer if you wanted the, uh, to tell the engineer what this part was gonna be like. So um, 
So let's talk about how to do that, how to turn this part into an actual drawing. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here to File and click on New again. And now we're going to create a drawing. So we're going to use this uh, IDW. Um, that's the drawing file that type that we're going to make. So we click on Standard IDW and then click on Create. All right. And so now we have this, this canvas that we can work on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put down a, a base view. So this base view is kind of the, the starting point. So on our drawing, this base view is usually in the bottom left-hand corner. Whatever view is down here is called the base view. So in the, this drawing that we're trying to recreate, the base view is kind of looking at this part sort of from, from this side, as if this, this little T were facing toward us and we were looking at the thing straight on. This. So, um, so let's do that. So we're going to put down a base view. And um, so first of all, uh, it's going to ask us which part we want. It defaults to the part we were just looking at. So, um, so that's good. And then we can choose which angle we're looking at this from. So, um, so if we're looking at it from the, the top, we can see that the, the little um, T part is kind of extending out this way. So we know that we want to look at it actually from, from the side where the T part is pointing towards us. So I'm going to click on that uh, little arrow and then rotate it around and um, that should be good. So we can also choose um, the, the type of view that we want. We want the view with hidden lines. And then, um, so now we're looking at it from the right, the right side, the right direction, but it looks a little bit small on our page. So um, I'm going to change the scale here. I'm going to make this uh, 2 to 1 so that that is a little bit bigger and easier to see. So uh, I'm going to say OK. And that has created this, this base view for us. So that should look pretty much like what we have on our drawing here. So, so far, so good. And now I'm going to move this um, around um, so that it's just a little bit away from the edge. All right. So now. After we have the base view, normally we want at least two other views, one from the top and one from the side. And those are called projected views. So if I click on projected up here, I can now click on my base view and drag it up. And that um, shows us that if I drag it up here, we'd be looking at it from the top, which is what we want. So I drag it and then um, click where I want it to be. And then I'm going to drag this one over here, and, um, and I'm going to click where I want that to be. Notice that I, I cannot move this view up or down. Okay? That's because a projected view is what this, what this object would look like if you turned it 90 degrees. So like if you, if you took this thing here and rotated 90 degrees, this is what you would see. So a projected view is always lined up with your base view um, so, that, so that you can, you can see what's going on there. Okay? So um, I can move it back and forth left and right here, but I cannot move it up and down. Okay? So anyway, I'll just pick a, a spot here. It's not critical exactly where. I'll click there. Um, and then finally, I'm going to put one more view up here. Um, th this is not necessary for a drawing, but it's often helpful to have a, a view like this. This is called an isometric view, um, where you get to kind of see the whole part. So I'm going to click that right there. And then when I'm done, I'm just going to right click anywhere and say create. And this will now create the, the, the views that I selected. 
Now, this is looking pretty good. In my, my drawing, I actually had the isometric view all shaded in. So I can change that if I want. I can come up here and um, um, right click on it. And then um, I can click on Edit View. And I can change the style. And I can make this a shaded style so that it, it looks a little bit more realistic. OK, so we can see what that, that would look like. All right, so now I've got my, my views. But you notice I don't have any of the dimensions yet. OK, I want to actually put in these dimensions so that people can see um, how big this, this part is. So the way that I do that is I come up here to the annotate ribbon. And um, I can click on this dimension. Uh, button. So then I can just start clicking uh, on the lines that where I want to add these dimensions and just put the dimensions in. So I, I click there um, and then it, it comes up with this edit dimension box that allows you to, to put in these extra symbols and things like that. Um, mostly we're not going to use that, so we just say OK. Um, so then I can, I would just go through the the dimensions that are shown on the drawing and make sure that um, all of those dimensions are here. Now, again, you might have to get a little bit creative with, with how you put in those dimensions. I'm trying to put in a dimension for this left-hand line, but if, I, if I'm clicking on the line, it's not exactly sure which, it's not giving me a dimension. So I'm can you use a different way to specify that dimension? I know that I want it to be the dimension between this top line and this bottom line, so I'm just going to click on those two and put it in that way. Okay. Um, so most of those are pretty straightforward. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Um, the way you put in a dimension for a circle is you click on the, the edge of the circle and you put that in. Um, you can put in a dimension between two lines by clicking on those two lines. Um, so just like that. And then for the holes, for these holes, you can click on the, the center of the hole, or sorry, the, the uh, outline of the hole. Oh, come on. Um, and then that should bring up this hole dialog. Let's see. It doesn't want to do that right now. Um, let's see. It should bring up a dialog for, that has all of that uh, information about the hole here. But I'm not seeing it right now. No. OK, well, we'll come back to that. Um, anyway, the, the other thing I wanted to point out was this title block down here. Um, so this title block. Um, it has some very important information in it. Um, it. It should have the title of the drawing, it should have the date, and it should have um, your name. Um, it should say that this is drawn by you. But if I, if I click down here, um, there, it's, it's not really easy to edit this. I could, I could put it like text down here um, and, and put in some information that way. Um, but that's really not the best way to do it. The best way to do it is um, with the properties of this drawing. So this, these fields are actually populated by the properties of this drawing. So if I come up here to File, and then I Properties, this is where you can actually put in information that will fill in this title block. So um, if I go to Summary and I put in the author, um, and then I click Apply, you can see that now the, the author is updated to my name, whereas before it was just my student ID. And then the title 
whatever title I put in here is going to go down there. So I'm going to put in the title of demonstration part and click apply and now demonstration part is there. Um, so uh, you could put in the, the um, drawing number as well if you want. Um, that would be under part number. You can put in whatever you want. So, so really these properties are the best way to populate this, um, this title block down there. And then the other thing I wanted to uh, point out is that when we're looking at this drawing, these numbers are, are written in text that is pretty darn small. So it, if we're looking at the drawing as a whole, um, it, it's really hard to read these numbers. They're, they're really small. So we might want to make the, the numbers a little bit bigger. So the way we can do that is we come up here to Manage and then go to Styles Editor. And then um, under Text, um, I think it's the, the label text here. Or no, I'm sorry, the note text. So we can make that um, 0.24. And then those numbers get a lot bigger and easier to read. Okay. Um, so yeah, for some reason this um, the the um, information about these holes is not popping up when um, the way that it should. So I'm just going to say don't worry about that. Um, just put in the dimension for th those holes and uh, that, that should be enough. But other than that, um, when you're doing your drawing, just try and put in all of the other dimensions that are shown here. Um, I think the only other one that might be difficult is this, this angle. So if you want to show an angle, um, you can click on one line and then click on another line. And um, let's see. One line and then, yeah, so when I'm hovering over this other line, it might be hard for you to see, but there's, my cursor has a little angle, um, a little angle uh, picture next to it, icon. Um, and when, when you do that and you click down, um, that should give you the angle uh, between those two lines, okay? Um, so, yeah, so... When this is all done, you can um, click on Save, and you'll save that where you want it. And then the last thing you'll do is you will export this. So we're going to export, go File, Export, and then PDF. And again, you can export it wherever you want. Um, and then this will create a, a PDF version of your drawing that you could share more easily than a, a um, an inventor file because anybody can view a PDF file. So then when you're all done and you have your PDF, you're going to go to uh, Canvas and upload that PDF to this assignment. So um, you would go uh, to ET193 and then under um, under assignments, uh, there is this first 3D CAD part. So you would um, upload this drawing that you have done right here to this assignment, and that's how you'll get credit uh, for the work today. Um, and then this assignment also has the drawing of the part that you are going to be working on. Again, that is this part right here. A little bit different than what I did, but um, the same basic operations. Okay, so um, so that's what you're going to be working on. So, any questions about that? Yeah. So when you go to drawing and create ones, it pops. Oh, for the bits, it pops out the one that you draw. It's always like that, or no? Uh, 
I'm, I'm sorry, what was the question? What uh, pops out? The goal is to create yeah. on the 3D uh, drawing. Yeah. Uh, it pops out for the base, this drawing. It's always like that or not? Oh, so, so when we are here at the, uh, we're making a drawing and we go um, place views and we, we place a base view. Um, so you can choose any, any part that you want for the base view. So, if, so by default, it, it created a base view of the drawing we were just working on. But you could browse and choose a different uh, part if you want. OK. Yeah. Um, other questions? All right, then uh, let me take attendance, and then um, you can have a short break, and then, yeah, we can get started here.